for you to get everything you want out of life, your business has to be healthy and not a job. All right, my friends, the Ultimate OD Podcast, we are talking business. I will give you the key to the castle, the template you need to make your business better. It's a simple, easy thing to do, but it takes effort and a focused energy. Stay tuned. See what that is. We have the closing thought of the episode. This is the Ultimate OD Podcast. Here we go. All right, my friends, the Ultimate OD Podcast. Today, I'm going to help you understand or help us understand what it takes to be great at business. All right? That's what we're going to be talking about. Before I get to that, a little housekeeping. Thank you for the emails. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for all the people that have reached out. And again, keep reaching out. I will get back to you. I will communicate with you. If I haven't, I apologize. Crazy, crazy time. I am trying to make myself better. I'm trying to make the podcast better, trying to make the business better. I'm trying to improve every walk of life. And sometimes when I'm looking at my things to do, I don't get to those emails right away, but I have them. I never delete them. I promise I will respond. And if I don't respond to you directly, immediately, usually it's because you've tickle a little uh, portion of my brain and I've had to think about it and I might make it a whole full episode. Okay. So stay in touch, keep communicating. Let's grow. Let's get better. Oh, this is going to be a fun episode. This episode has been just resonating in my mind and a couple of things came together and now we have this. So let, let me get started. Alex Hormozzi, love the guy, love what he says. He had this quote, and he said, if someone were to tell you they could teach you to play the violin in eight weeks with one session a week and some videos in between, what do you think would happen? You would probably understand the absolute basics of the violin. Would you be good enough to play professionally? Probably not. And if you wanted to become a master violinist, it would take three hours a day for 15 years. Replace the violin with whatever skill you're trying to learn right now, and there you go, right? I thought that was brilliant, insightful, and illustrated a lot of our impatience, right? We want it now. And if we, as doctors, as business owners, don't get a return on investment or ROI immediately, How quick are we to pivot and turn and say it's not going to work? I talked to a lot of you guys about marketing and if you're not getting the return that you want, like in three months or less, you're like, forget that, I'm out, right? We're not great at playing the long game, but with a long enough time horizon, we cannot lose. What are you aiming towards? What are you working to get better at? And I listened to a podcast this morning. Uh, when I was out for a run, very, very glad I listened to this. And Seth Godin was talking about the process he goes through to write his books, to write his blog, and what his thought process was. And he was on the Tim Ferriss podcast, and Tim Ferriss asked, "Why do you, you know, why do you write every day? Why do you do this?" And Godin's response was great. It was. When you wake up today, are you going to take a shower? And the answer is yes. You're going to take a shower. Are you going to brush your teeth? There's things that you just do because it's a new day. And Golden said, I write every day because it's a new day, right? Just like I'm going to brush my teeth, just like I'm going to take a shower, that's what I do. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, I do it. And I have a laundry list of potential book ideas. I have a laundry list of, you know, thoughts that I've put on paper that have cued other things to get me to different places in my, my life, my profession. But that's why I write every day. And that was just, that was what I've been searching for. Because I, myself, 
love optometry. I love the profession. I like dry eye. I like primary care. I love running the business. But right now, the biggest juice I get, whenever I get really excited, really focused, it's how am I going to grow the business? What am I going to do? And I've told you guys, I've put it out there. I'm going to do 10 million in 10 years. I've said that to so many different people in the past two, three, year and a half that people are holding me to that, to that. And I think that's amazing. But I don't like to let people down, right? I have a group in the in my P3 and we send a you know communication to each other. We're keeping each other accountable. And I'm probably one of the more active ones in that. And I don't even care that they don't respond. I don't even care if no one listens, right? But I'm doing it because I, with a thought of having someone holding me accountable, I'm not going to let them down. Also, because I've seen what other people are doing and I'm, I have enough ego to say, why not me? I'm going to do everything I can to get there. And one of the things that we did there is we looked at all of our numbers and they point out some weaknesses in my in my numbers and I've been like, what the crap? How do I get this better? How do I focus on this and be better? And I want to share what that, that process has done. So all that lead up to make us better at business. And we, I have a whole series on the CEO mindset and I want to keep exploring the CEO mindset. A CEO, three areas of focus, right? Culture, people, numbers. I want to focus on the numbers aspect of what we're doing right now, okay? We all have numbers that we watch. We have KPIs. And if you don't have KPIs, if you don't have numbers you're watching, step one, give yourself a scoreboard, right? I've gotten so good at looking at my numbers. I have Edge Pro. And I've been following that. I look at that weekly. We have a weekly scorecard. I fill it out. I give it to my staff. The staff looks at the numbers. We are completely transparent on where we stand and what we're doing. Okay? Well, I looked at it and I'm like, something seems off. It just doesn't feel right. I'm not, this doesn't make any sense for what we're doing and where we're at. And you know what? Edge Pro has a fall. And some of my stuff isn't getting posted there because of how uh, my billers are putting it in. Just weird nuance to it. But Edge Pro didn't know. But I kept knocking on the door. I'm like, why is this not making sense? What's going on? And they're like, oh, yeah, this is happening. They just found out and they let us know. Well, I love that because I've gotten so attuned to the pulse of my practice that I can look at my numbers and be like, this doesn't make sense. I love that. Do you guys feel that way about your business? Do you have numbers? Do you have KPIs that you're watching that if they're off, you're like starting to freak out? Like, what's going on? Why is this happening? We need to fix something, right? You manage what you measure. And if you don't measure anything, how are you going to manage anything, right? You're just doing it aimlessly without a rudder. So that was one aspect of knowing your numbers, being in touch with them. The other thing that happened was we looked at our P&L. And when you look at your P&L, there's things you're going to look at. You're going to look at your revenue in, right? We always can want more revenue. Revenue, though, as they say, is a vanity number. Yeah, I do X, Y, or Z gross. What are you keeping at the bottom line? And when you look at what you're keeping, that is where people are studs. They're, they're, they're big dogs. They're growing, having multiple practices, adding doctors. When that bottom line, their net is high. Their EBITDA is up. Who cares about the revenue if you have nothing to show for it, right? Vanity, reality. Well, reality is affected by like your cost of goods and your expenses, right? Cost of goods. Look at your P&L and you look at your contact lenses, you look at your lab bills, you look at your frames. I look at my dry eye products, right? All my inventory that I keep with those. And I track those things. When you look at all those things, what I encourage you to do, talk to every single one of your frame vendors, talk to every your lab rep, talk to whoever you're buying stuff from and see if you can get better pricing, right? It does not hurt to ask. 
And you know what? I did that for some of my things. And you know what? I found better rates. I got discounts. Why? Because I asked the question. I was trying to improve my business. You have to look at it to get better or to, to know what's going on. And you have to do something about it if you want it to change, right? So I implore you, you should get your PL and it shouldn't be something you do at the end of the year. I get it at the end of every stinking month. I look at it, we break it down. I have a little spreadsheet that says what percentages and I have numbers that I'm trying to hit for each and every one. Again, I do that to make sure the business is healthy. You can look at a month at a time, but I find a lot of value looking at a rolling six month or rolling 12 month average because then you can't say, well, this was a slow season, this was a busy season. When you look at that extended period of time, it factors everything in. It looks you in the face and tells you how you're doing. All right, so look at your costs and try to get them down or cost of goods sold, try to get those down. The next thing you do is you look at those expenses. And you look at every single expense. I did this and I was baffled. I'm like, all right, we're high in our overhead. We got to cut costs somehow. And you know what happened? I didn't know where I was going to cut anything. Everything I laid out, I'm like, well, we have to do this. We have to have our computers, you know, with our IT department. We have to have, you know, the subscription with, solution reach to have the online scheduler. My marketing is this, how am I gonna get this down? And it's been just gnawing at me, right? My my people I respect and look up to looked at me and said, your overhead is too high. And I looked at my overhead and I didn't know how to get it down. And that's been something that's been a huge focus of what I've been trying to do. But you know what I did? I just kept knocking kept knocking and knocking and knocking. And you know what I did? By the end of the year, I, I found three subscription type services that I was doing things on that would have been going in perpetuity. And I'm gonna save myself, I think about 10 grand a year. Yes, 10 grand, woo, it's 10 grand I have. It's a start. Who would not want 10 grand at the end of the year? I don't care how much you're making. I say, here's $10,000, you're like, sure, I'll take it, right? But I looked at it, and again, this is not easy. You will justify everything in your head that you absolutely need to do this. But you know what I love about this? When we added a virtual assistant, I told my managers, we're going to have the virtual assistant. No way we're not going to do that. And I gave them a list of tasks. I said, the virtual assistant is going to do this. I don't care what you say. And they went through and they had about three things. I'm like, okay, how should you do this? Like, oh, it's just easier if we do it. I'm like, no, that is not how this works. They are going to do it and you're going to find a way. And you know what they did? They found a way. But because we did that, I found a way where I think I'll be able to cut my IT department, the computer that I have in office, cut that bill in half, save myself on computers because I put the pieces in place for the virtual assistant, it's going to pay dividends for my rest of my office. And that's going to keep going and going and going. And I'm going to have lesser, less of a bill. And I bring this up because I looked at it and I didn't have an answer. I didn't know what I was going to do, but it's my focus right now. It is all I think about. I told you 10 million in 10 years. They told me, you know, my mentors, my, my people that are uh, helping guide me, my coaches, if you will, you can do it, but you got to get your net up. If you don't get your net up, you're not going to be able to grow and expand. And that's all I want, right? Seth Godin, why do you get up and do this? Because it's a new day. I want to be better at business every single day. I wake up. My goal is to get better. Now, again, I wasn't taking it to the level until I heard this this morning from Seth. Every single day, I have to do something to get better at business. I don't know what that looks like, what that means, but it's now something I'm putting in my head. Alex Hermosi putting out that thing. You want to be a master at the violin? This is what you have to do. I want to be one of the best business owners in the optometric world. 
Why, why would you not want to be that, right? You want to be good at what you do. What does it take? Three hours a day for 15 years to get up every day and say, I'm doing this because it's a day that I'm alive and awake and functioning, right? Like, and that's what my focus is. And that's what my drive has been. And you should see the things that are changing, the excitement that I have. My staff is going there. And again, I'm giving you one little focus right now. It's looking at the numbers, right? Your KPIs, have a scorecard. Look at that P&L. Break it down. How can you get the net to be higher? I challenge you to get 1% more, right? And if you're lazy about it, if you're not putting energy towards it, there's seasons where that happens. It doesn't have to happen now, but realize you are doing your business a disservice, right? Are you a business owner? Are you a doctor? If you're not the business owner, get someone in here that will run that business and let you be the doctor. It's totally fine to have that relationship, have that situation. But for you to get everything you want out of life, your business has to be healthy and not a job. It has to be something that can function and live without you in it. Take care of it. Nurture it. Have that long enough time horizon to know that the value is at the other end. Okay? We'll talk about culture. We'll talk about people more in future episodes. I'm I'm all about this being better at business thing. I have more for you, but I'm going to put it in the closing thought because it's, it's, it's awesome. It's a great closing thought. That's what I have for you to be a better business owner. Let me know what are the five favorite KPIs that you have. Put them in the comments below. Send me an email. I'll send you mine. You send me yours. Hey, let's get better together. This is the Ultimate OD Podcast. We'll have more for you next week. Where, oh, where has the time gone? We are to the closing thought of the episode. And this I wanted to share with you. This I thought was amazing. Okay. So again, going back to that Seth Godin interview. And Tim was asking Seth how he opened himself up to new opportunities. And he said, you just have an opportunity that comes and then you drop other things and go to the new opportunity. So that that's that. But I will literally create a vacuum in my life where I don't know if I'm ever going to work again. I don't know if I'm ever going to do X, Y, or Z again. I will create a void and see what the universe, what the opportunity comes to fill it. And that was awesome for me to hear. That was That's exactly the juice I needed right now because... I'm adding another doctor in the fall, and one of the main reasons I'm doing that is I want to work on the business. I talked to my wife the other night, and I'm like, once I get the business up and running, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with my time. I don't know how I'm going to spend it. You know what? I'm probably only, I'm going to work a half day on Thursday, and uh, you know, I'll have Thursday afternoon and Friday off, right? But then I heard that podcast, and I, I heard that, and I said, you know what? I might just up and right from the get-go take Thursdays and Fridays off. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do, but purposely creating a void and seeing what the opportunity is that comes. That sounds very intriguing to me. And I'm not going to be lazy about it. I have this mindset that I need to be better at business. Maybe I'll, I'll read about business articles. Maybe I'll listen to business podcasts. I don't stink and know, but I know that I need to do stuff outside of the exam room to get better in the business world. It's just a fact. I need to work on the business. Do I know what that means right now? Absolutely not. But by creating the opportunity for something to happen, it can happen. But if I don't give myself the time, the space, the void, I don't think it will be, it may happen, but not as quickly. Right? So again, I'll let you know how that goes. I have a year to kind of figure that out, but things like that, you know there's something you want to do. You know there's something more. There's something that you want to get off your plate 
And you're just not doing it because you don't know what you do in the interim. Take a shot, drop it, make a vacuum, make a void, and see what, what opportunity arises. That's what I have for you. Dr. Lily out.